I wanted to make a video explaining some of the modifications I did, but most importantly, power supply modification. The Philostruder, which is this black box and the pipe, uh, comes with a very, I'm not going to say janky because it's a perfectly functional power supply, but it is, it outputs 12 volts and up to 5 amps of power, which is barely enough to run the Philostruder as it is supplied by the manufacturer or the, the kit supplier, Philostruder. Uh, it's got enough power to, you know, heat it up and turn the auger and run a few fans to, to make it work. However, uh, while you're running it in stock form, as the heater, you know, once you actually get things going, and you've got material in there and material's moving, uh, the heater is constantly, you know, turning on to, to heat it up and then turning off to, to not keep heating it up too much, just like a 3D printer. Uh, so it's on and off using power from the power supply. Uh, people familiar with this will, will roll their eyes, but basically what this means is the power available to the extruder motor uh, increases every time the uh, heater turns off okay uh, and what that means is that the motor will actually speed up a little bit and when the heater turns back on the motor will slow down a little bit and, and basically what this is is a result of what happens when uh, when a power supply is supplying more or less its limit of power it's 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 not dying but what happens is the voltage goes down a little bit as it's, as it's having to provide its maximum capability of power. The voltage that it's providing goes down a little bit. And so what you get is the extruder motor slowing down and speeding up and slowing down and speeding up. And so what that causes is variations in the diameter of the filament that's coming out. Because as material has more pressure behind it, more material comes out when the motor speeds up. And when the motor slows down, it has less pressure behind it, and so less material comes out. And so uh, when there's more material coming out, there's more to be stretched, and so it doesn't stretch as thinly. And when there's less material coming out, there's less to be stretched, and so it stretches more thinly. And so what you end up is with filament that is uh, that has a very wide variance, right? So you're going to get filament coming out of there that might be, you know, depending on what kind of material you're producing, could have a variance of uh, a full millimeter. You know, you're trying to put out a, a 1.75 millimeter, and when it's going slow, it pushes out stuff that stretches to one millimeter, and when it's going fast, it doesn't stretch enough, and you're getting two millimeter uh, material. So, uh, problem number one to solve is reducing that speed up, slow down effect. And what I've found is the most effective way to do that is to ditch the crappy little block power supply and give it more volts and amps. So this is a, uh, you know, bench top cheapy China power supply thing. It goes up to 30 volts. And if I, I've experimented with higher voltage, but you really don't need much higher than 12 volts. But it, it also provides up to 10 amps. And you'll see right now it's consuming 5.3 amps. That is just the heater coil, right? Because the the heater is currently on, bringing it up to 245. The heater coil and five fans, one, two, three, four, or, okay, four fans and an LED. Uh, there's another fan in here, but it's not on until I turn the auger on. That's, that's already more amps than the brick that it comes with can provide. So if I had this and I turned on the motor, the brick would die. And in some cases, the brick would die as soon as I turned the fans on. If I turn the fans off, you'll see it goes down to 4.3. So the fans and lights take about an amp. So when I had this with the, with the brick, it was it was just heating up and I would turn it on, turn the fans on and it, and it would brown out, it would like die. So more amps is good. But the reason I went with more volts is because, like I mentioned earlier, when the power supply is providing as many as much power as it can, the voltage that it's able to provide goes down a teeny little bit. So if you're 
providing more volts than it actually needs, then when the voltage drops a little bit, it's no big deal. And that's where the stall board, as they call it, comes in. This is just a DC regulator, and it's got a nice fancy LED readout and everything, and it has controls for voltage and amperage output. So this is set to only output 12 volts and only up to 3 amps. And this this specifically here is what gives power to the actual auger of the Philostruder. And in this case, I also have my hopper, uh, auger assisted hopper hooked up to that same output. So when I flip the extruder switch, I'm not gonna do it now, but when I flip that, 18 volts and 10 amps is provided to this DC regulator. And the DC regulator regulates it down to 12 volts and three amps output, which means <laughs> and sorry for being so long-winded and spending six minutes to get to this point, but what that means is that when the heater is turning on and off and on and off and on and off, and whether I got these fans on or, or anything else on connected to that power supply, the auger is always going to get 12 volts, or at least really, really close to 12 volts. It might go down to 11.9 or something like that, but it's not going to be detrimental. It's not going to have such a great impact on the diameter of the filament. So, my variations are much closer to uh, 0.1 millimeters. So if I'm trying to output uh, 1.75, I might get 1.85, or I might get 1.65. But that's a whole lot better than somewhere between 1.0 and 2.0. So, TLDR or TLDW, <laughs> get a decent power supply for your, for your Philostruder system, Give it 18 volts, set up your DC regulator to provide 12 volts. You don't need to go faster, you just need to do, not speed up and slow down all the time. And I like 18 volts because it gives the heater uh, plenty of juice to, to get to the temperatures I need, even while all these fans are blowing onto the nozzle. So, uh, again, sorry for the long-winded uh, video, but easier than typing. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, please post under wherever I post this video or in the comments of the video itself. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.